Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. We're talking to Tony today, who Hi. drives the swamp thing. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you some few questions, if that's right, Yeah, far away, Luke. Go on, far so, away. first question, how long have you been driving swamp thing for? I've been driving swamp thing now for 19 years. 19 years? Yeah. And it's the best company car in the world, because you get to thrash it every time you go out. Um, has, how did you come to driving the monster truck? Um, I saw it on TV when I was probably about eight and I used to watch them on like Christmas Day specials and I'd rather watch the specials and open my presents. So I've always been interested in monster trucks. Um, but the way I got into it, I used to do sidecar motocross and I needed some way of getting my motocross bike to the track. So instead of having a transit van like most people, I had a pickup and put bigger wheels on it and put bigger wheels on it. And it just went from there and there. And then I, I belonged to a, 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 a custom Harlux club and there's a group of us on there and decided we had enough bits to build a monster truck. So we built the most basic monster truck that you could. And that was it, I was hooked from there. And basically I had to get a lot of money and buy a, a fairly good used secondhand one. And then just kept reinvesting the money, reinvesting the money going from show to show to make it what it is today. It's really impressive as well. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you come up with the name something? Um, so the idea of Swamp Thing is, when we was on honeymoon with my wife was in Florida and we wanted something that was a really American and that's what one thing that stood in our mind, there was a big alligator in the middle of the Everglades, was in the road and it would not get out of the way and we literally had to make a detour then because this alligator owned the road and that's what Swamp Thing is meant to resemble an alligator, alligators live in a swamp, that's why it's called Swamp Thing. Ah. So uh, some pretty Common questions I'm going to ask you now. So yeah, yeah. Brake horsepower. It's 2,000 horsepower, but it's it's not built for horsepower. It's built for torque, so it's 1,800 pounds feet of torque, and that's not bad because it's not a diesel truck like an uh, like in a lorry. This is a a modified petrol engine which you're actually running on methanol. How much does that use? Um, so on full throttle we do 56 meters to the gallon. So this is not a lot at all. <laughs> no, it works out at 30 gallons per mile. So it's but, quite expensive. Yeah, it's quite expensive. We've only got a 26 gallon fuel tank in there. If I drive the monster truck really hard, I can empty the whole 26 gallons in three minutes. Three minutes? Three minutes, yeah. How fast okay, so can it go? So the monster truck weighs five and a half tons, does naught to 60 in four seconds. So it's as fast as a Porsche, but it's five and a half fast, tons. Fast as a Porsche. Yeah, but I can do it <laughs> across a field. I can do it on tarmac. It doesn't really make much difference. The only problem on, on grass, it takes a lot more to stop it because it's sliding. Sliding around, yeah. So yeah. Do, does it have large brakes on it? or? Uh, no, it has one brake on the front and one brake on the back. So it hasn't got a brake in each corner like on a, like a, a lorry or a car. So it's got, it brakes on the transmission. So it's got one on the back of the diff and one on the front of the diff. So on the back and front diffs and that's it. So they, if, they, if they break, you're in trouble. <laughs> well, no, it's, they're <laughs> yeah. two completely separate systems. So the front brakes are completely separate to the back brakes. So there's two master cylinders in there. So if I say I've done a jump and a bit of car comes through and it cuts through the, the brake line, it's still got another one that's completely separate to it. So you still have, so some, you still have the brake. some, some brakes. Um, also, EBC, one of my sponsors, they make me a special brake pad just for the monster truck because it works from being stone cold to the brake disc being going bright red and we don't get any brake fade with it. It's an amazing product, but they can't make it road legal because it's got some, um, I think it's asbestos or something in there that isn't very good. That, which actually was one of my questions. Could it be made road legal? Not, not a chance. Not a chance. Uh, um, it's 12 and a half feet wide. So it's actually classed as a wide load. Um, so it's wider than the carriageway. Um, the visibility in a monster truck is terrible. So when we're maneuvering it in very tight spaces, we're driving it on tick over with our foot on the brake. People are watching me all the time. I'm getting hand, um, hand um, directions where to go because people, if they shout at me, I can't hear in there. Um, you can't see backwards when you're in the monster truck. You can only see forwards. So when you're reversing up to somewhere, you're taking direction from somebody in front of you. So very limited. Very, lot, very lot more blind spots on the truck. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, monster, a monster truck and a lorry. You've got mirrors everywhere. That we haven't got one mirror on the monster truck. Uh, basically, because they roll over so much and we smash them. Smash up. them all up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, walking around, I notice that you've got a lot of spare parts. So presumably you fix it on the site and. Yeah, yeah. So if anything break. Some, yeah. So anything in drive line is the bits that tend to break in a monster truck. So we're talking 
axles, half shafts, diffs, gearboxes, prop shafts, anything with that. That's the bit that really takes the hammer in the monster truck. We carry spare ones of them with us and we can fix the monster truck here or there. The only thing we don't carry, believe it or not, is a spare tyre. Because we've got no room to carry a spare tyre. <laughs> but we carry a lot of stuff to repair punctures. So we've got, got ram repairs, we've got vulcanising rubber. So if we get a, a, a small puncture in the tyre, we can fix it. If we get a three foot gash in the tyre, we have to go home in a van or get someone to bring a spare tyre up and then fit it onto the rim. And fitting it onto the rim is a nightmare as well because they're not a split rim, they're a one piece rim and that tyre is 500 kilos, so it's half a tonne just on the tyre. And it's quite a big tyre as well, how, how tall is it? Yeah, so it's 66 inches tall and they're just under four feet wide. Each one's two and a half thousand pound each, plus that. <laughs> the, the cost? Yeah, for, for a tyre. <laughs> so yeah. it's two and a half grand tyre yeah. each? Yeah. But you don't really wear them out, is you, you get a puncture in a, that you cannot fix. So, so does it have air inside? Does yes. It, so what's, what's the PSI on that? So we've got we, anything between 14 and 18. So this week we're, we're, we're be at 16. So cause quite we're low grass. then. Yeah, well the, the, it's all to do with pounds per square inch. So we've got loads of, loads of inches, so we don't need many pounds. So in a lorry tyre, you haven't got many inches on the ground. So you put 120 PSI on the tyre. Our tyres, so much wider and so much bigger we actually don't need much pressure in there <laughs> so uh something we spoke about earlier actually is that um the cars yes. you, you don't provide the cars no no so Which, I, 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 all i ask of the people i do the shows for is it's not a ford ka or that sort of tire we want to be sort of like ford focus upwards um the main reason so the that length of it is, is the length so we, we want the car that's well over 14 foot long. So presumably, so then your tyres can go yeah, over so it. So then we get a nice nice hit on the car, because believe it or not, the strongest point in the car is in between the two wheel, on the, where the wheel arches are. New modern cars now are actually worse for a monster truck than you, you would think, oh, cars are safer, they're stronger, they're not. Older cars from the 1980s and 1990s are stronger than a new car, because on a new car, they're making them really light, and to make them safer, they fill them full of airbags because airbags are really light, so they're making the cars really strong. Strong structurally. Yeah, So and they're also meant to be hit from the front and the back. They're not meant to be hit in the sides, mm. and that's why we hit them in a monster truck. So yeah, it's 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 weird. It's like the, the, the newer the car, the more they go flat quicker. <laughs> um, Citroen, Picasso, or something like that, they actually go over fairly easy. Um, a Mark IV Mondeo, it's the back window so big, and there's no strength in the back of it when you hit it with a monster truck, it goes flat. If you want, for, for me, my preferred cars are Saabs and, and BMWs. They really, really stay up for, uh, but they're mainly German or Swedish, so anything French isn't a good car. Do you, have you seen the cars that you've got this weekend? Do you know what I, they are I haven't yet, even or? looked at them yet. <laughs> Someone was saying they've got a, 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 a Grand Voyager out there, which, which is a very high car, so we'll probably put that in the middle. We want like a, a saloon car for the, to start off with, and then for me, it doesn't really matter what you put after that. So do you lay them out yourselves? Do you pick and choose where I they go? I just go when I, later on today, I'll go and see what cars they are. And I'll tell the guy who's laying them up, I'll go, that's the car I want first. And I'll go, at least four cars after that. Uh, the idea of putting four, so four to five cars in a stack is because when you're coming in with a monster truck, it's a heavy, heavy weight. If it's, too, if it's too light, what's behind it? All you do is it's like Newton's cradle. You hit the first one and you go buh, 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 and the M1 flies off. Mm. So the idea is trying to keep get them as a big pack and try and keep that weight together so we don't end up pushing them down the arena. So how many cars would you say maximum is what you would want how to many, jump? How many cars have I jumped in one go? Yeah. Uh, the most I've jumped in one go is 12 with no ramp. With no ramp? Yeah. How'd you do that then? Just, just go, go, go over it. Yeah, just, <laughs> so I've kept on going into, there's no, when we can do the show, there's no ramps out there. We're hitting straight into the side of a car. It's a really hard hit when you hit it in a monster truck. Mm. Um, when you see Monster Jam racing on telly, they, they've got a dirt ramp, they've got a dirt ramp, and that's, so the takeoff is always the same. Now, when we're doing the shows out here, we're actually adjusting all the time to how the car's collapsing. Because one end's got an engine in it, the back end hasn't any, got anything in it. So that back will actually go a lot lower than the front. So what you have to do is when you come up to the car, you actually have to hit the low side first. So you actually go up the car, then you hit the side with the engine, and that's actually what makes you go jump straight in the end. Really impressive. <laughs> so um, like see over there, you've got a walkie-talkie. 
Yeah. Nat, if I'm right, it shuts the engine off. Yeah, so, so, there's so, so on the monster truck, it's got a remote control just for the monster truck's engine. So if, if I'm driving it around the arena, and we've had it before, we've done a show where there was a dog at the arena, managed to get into the arena with the monster truck. Now I'm driving away from where the dog is, so, so you I, can't can't, see I can't see it anyway. The guy, the, the brother was actually on the remote, shut the monster truck off. And I'm like, what you shut <laughs> me off for? I'm just driving around normally. And he's like, oh, so I've got out, turned the monster, rest of the button, everything, everything else in the monster truck. And like, oh, there's a dog there. Okay, just get the dog back to the person who owns the dog. Yeah. And we just get on with the show from there. Also, things do break on a monster truck. It's five and a half tons you're throwing into the air and landing. Sometimes bits do break on it. Like I've had a shock absorber come disattached. Now, shock, shock absorbers, are filled with nitrogen we've got a lot of pressure in them that we don't want that going off into the crowd so they shut the monster truck off and then we just take it to a safe area and then fixed it i don't know whether this is true but can monster trucks float on water yeah yeah so i actually done it for scrappy challenge so it's doing this thing called scrappy races uh sorry sort of swamp races and so yeah so the idea was they wanted me to be the expert on the team to build the vehicle but i was busy doing shows and at one point they said like can, can we borrow your tires I'm like no because I need them I'm doing the show okay can you come down and do a crossing across this lake I went yeah we can come down that and do it for you so I went down there and I said look the only thing I need is I need as I'm going straight from here straight to a show up in Driffield and we're filming it just outside Reading at um, this really nice country house so I've done the thing and I said, like, I need a jet wash because I need to load it straight up and get off to the next show. So I can only film the morning because I've got a long way to go. Went down there, went through the water. Oh, it's the most mingiest water ever. We have pond weed and stuff on the monster truck, absolutely everywhere. Got through the water, got out the other side. And he went, that was great. That was awesome. Can you go any faster? I don't know. I've never done it. So I went in there, put my foot down doesn't go any faster, all happens is it makes, beats up the water and you, get, splash. Yeah, and you get more wet in there. <laughs> so they, 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 that was great, we got all the shots we wanted, um, did a couple of like high speed passes through water and splashed the presenters and stuff like that and they loved it. And I, okay, I, I'm, can I, I'm all, all finished for today yet? Yeah. Right, where's the jet wash? Oh, there's the jet wash. Right. So where's the water <laughs> and the power supply? Oh, you didn't ask for that. I'm like, my truck now is absolutely minging and I've got a show to do that the next day. So luckily they had a, f a fire crew on site. So I reversed the monster <laughs> truck up to the lake and we were sucking water out the lake and then washing the monster truck off. Using the fire engine. We used the fire, and I'm not joking. We, so we, then we got up to the show at Driftfield that night, we took the monster truck apart because there was like clumps that you couldn't, it was so much mud, you couldn't even see the engine. All you could see was the exhaust pipes and no engine. There was that much mud wedged in it. So me and my brother just spent all night taking this thing apart, cleaning it and putting it back together. And probably four months later, we were still picking bits of mud out of it where it's got mud into everything. <laughs> it's all over the place. Oh yeah, because when we was coming out the lake, because it's a, it's a man-made lake, so it's actually got a clay liner. And basically we was ripping the liner as we are coming, because it had such deep soil, we were ripping the liner out of it. So I don't know if it actually held water at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... We're actually in your motor, motor home, you yeah, say. Yeah. This is how you transport your truck as well. It goes behind us, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, the, so we're in the living accommodation at the moment. Now, at the moment, we, it's quite big in here, but it's when we're transporting the monster truck, all this slides all the way forwards because the monster truck is, is 21 foot long and then we have to get the tyres in. So that's like 30 feet long. So, yeah. So it's, it takes a lot of room up to, just to transport. It's not the sort of thing you can go and stick on a car transport and tow behind your, your, your normal road car because hmm. it, it weighs five and a half tons also we need to carry all the tools to fix it um, all the spares with it yeah there's a lot to think about when you are operating a monster truck brilliant right so we're at uh shepton mallet not shepton my name <laughs> no we're, we're not shepton mallet <laughs> <laughs> we're at Peterborough. Truck, we're at <laughs> I forgot where we were then. We're at Truck Fest Peterborough. We're at Truck Peace, Fest Peterborough. Peace 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 the <laughs> um, obviously, by the time this video goes out, where can we see you next? Yeah, so from this show, we go, um, uh, we're up at, back up at Santa Pod for European. No, oh, sorry, uh, we're up, yeah. From, so from this show, the next show we're at is the main event up at Santa Pod, which is the beginning of the European drag racing series. So we are uh, adjacent to the drag strip at Santa Pod. 
Um, so people have a great time. So they get to see top fuel cars. We get jet cars, all different types of cars, door slammers. Um, you, if you think the monster truck's loud, that's nothing compared to a top fuel dragster. Um, my monster truck's 2,000 horsepower. They're 10,000 horsepower plus. Um, There's a lot. It's a, it's yeah. a lot, but it isn't just the the sound of it. You feel it. It's, as it goes, they, they go, you can have your park, car parked in the uh, car park. It will set off the car alarm, and it's a quarter of a mile away from where where the where the car is. They are that loud. And the, the most amazing thing I think is uh, when it's when you see it, so it does naught to 100 miles an hour in less than a second. They're doing naught to over 250 mile an hour in an eighth of a mile. So that's half track. They're doing 250 mile an hour, and uh, and and the engine only fires 600 times in that amount of time, and that engine needs to be rebuilt from scratch. From scratch, <laughs> every single time it goes down there, they rebuild the engine every single time. So not if you ever get the chance, go to Santa Pod and have a look around at the pits. If you want to see inside a, a, a real high performance engine, you can actually see them taking them up apart and rebuilding them. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Danny. All right. Thank you for letting us do it inside because it's raining outside. We were going to yeah. do it outside, but yeah. So thank you very much for inviting me in. Yeah. I look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah.